Okay, so this is learning objective two uh, in chapter five. Um, this is a, a, we're gonna be looking at things from a business to business standpoint, right? One business is selling merchandise to another business. We call that business to business or a B2B as it's often uh, put here, just don't get stung. There's a lot of Bs there. Uh, 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 okay, so as you see here, this is an invoice. Very important to understand that an invoice is an important piece of paper regarding accounting because it displays lots of information, okay? First of all, we have uh, a buyer and a seller, okay? The, uh, the buyer is listed here. They are the ones, um, in this case, the company is Sock Stereo. Uh, they're out in Illinois. They are the buyer because that's what is listed here. PW Audio is the seller. This is the seller's invoice. That's why their name is printed on the top there. And they sold the merchandise to Sock Stereo. So we have a buyer and we have a seller. A couple of other things that's very important to understand about invoices and reading invoices. Uh, of course, invoices have a date. That date is important because that's the date, right? That the buyer sees they're purchasing the merchandise, but that's also the date the seller sees they're selling the merchandise. Okay. So that date is very, very important in accounting because as you know, when we do a journal, it's all chronological. And so we have to find the date. So the date is very, very critical. We really don't care about the salesperson, although the salesperson cares about it because they probably work on commission. Uh, we do care about these other boxes, the terms of the sale and um, when ownership what's, uh, takes, takes uh, place. So I'm gonna talk about those in more detail briefly, but let's talk um, uh, just after I explain what they actually sold, right? They sold a printed circuit board Okay, one printed circuit board was sold. PW Audio sold that to Sock Stereo. And they also sold circuits. Okay, so PW Audio sold circuits to Sock Stereo. Uh, the price for each one is here, and the total amount for each item of inventory is here. And this is the total amount of merchandise that was sold. Okay, all those are very, very important to understand because for uh, Sock Stereo, when they buy this, uh, this invoice becomes an accounts payable to them because they're buying these um, goods usually on account. So the, the, this circuit board and these circuits are being sent to Sock Stereo with this invoice. So Sock Stereo is gonna be receiving the circuit board and the circuits and an invoice, which reflects a bill that they have to pay. And that's why the terms are very, very important. The terms is the terms of payment for this amount, okay? The terms of payment are, this is a, these are very common terms, what we call 210 net 30, 210 net 30. And what it means is that if they pay within the first 10 days, right, that's why the date's important too. If they pay within the first 10 days, which means by the 14th, okay, they can take 2% discount on what they owe. Right? They can send 2% less to pay the bill off. All right, no problem. But if they need to wait longer than that, then the net amount, that's the N, the net amount, is due in 30 days. And so basically speaking, uh, Sock Stereo bought $3,800 worth of inventory or merchandise from PW Audio. So for Sock Stereo, this is a bill they have to pay. They're gonna be receiving obviously the, the, the inventory, but they have a bill to pay, okay? For PW Audio, who's the seller, um, they sold this inventory and they're waiting to get paid. So this invoice becomes an accounts receivable 
for PW. Okay. So the buyer looks at this one way. The seller looks at this same invoice in a slightly different way, but it's the same invoice. Learning objective two focuses on the buyer. Okay, this is almost solely dedicated to how the buyer sees this. Learning objective three, which you're gonna be doing shortly, looks at the exact same invoice, but what the seller sees. And of course, you're gonna learn the bookkeeping from the buyer's perspective and the seller's perspective of the same uh, transaction, this transaction here. So how great is that? Incredible, right? Um, one other thing that I will get to because there is a slide on it, um, it's the FOB. And this is basically, remember, PW Audio owns the circuit board and the circuits. They are selling it to Sox Stereo. When does Sox Stereo own the circuit board and the circuits? Well, that's what this box tells us. And there's going to be more on that a little bit later. Okay. All right. So that's the setup. This is the invoice you're going to be looking at over and over again, because this is what the next two objectives are really focused on is this particular invoice. Mm -hmm. Please pay attention. Mm -hmm. All right. So what we've got going on here is we're looking at it from the buyer's perspective. Again, the buyer is Sox Stereo. So when Sox Stereo purchases this, they need to do a journal entry. So what Sox Stereo did is they purchased a circuit and a circuit board, uh, circuits and circuit board, and now they have a bill. So their bookkeeping is gonna show a debit to the inventory account. Remember what they purchased here is going to be their inventory. Remember inventory is an asset account, current asset specifically, right? So a debit to inventory means more inventory. But again, they got this invoice to pay. And that's why you have an accounts payable for $3,800 as well, because this has to get paid either in 10 or 30 days, but nonetheless, it's got to get paid, okay? So again, the date May 4th comes directly from the invoice. This is inventory. That's the amount of inventory. And this is a bill. So right away, recording the purchase for Sox Stereo. This is your first transaction that's gonna go in the journal. You might've already um, uh, been wondering a little bit about when that ownership takes place, because if you wanna look back at the invoice for a moment, PW Audio is in Michigan. And they are selling this to Sox Stereo, which is in Illinois. Okay. And, and the states get bigger as we go further out west. So this is not like a hop, skip, and a drum. This is this is going to be shipped to them. So the question becomes: at what point does PW uh, does Sox Stereo own it? Because PW Audio Supply owns it before they sell it. So when does Sock actually own it? Well. That's what this shows, okay? The most common uh, FOB, which is uh, freight on board, uh, the most common point of ownership occurs at shipping. So what that means was as soon as the, again, the seller is PW Audio, as soon as they box it up and give it to the carrier, whoever the carrier is, could be UPS, could be the postal service, um, that's when the ownership of, in this case, the circuit board and circuits, that's when it occurs. So as soon as it gets on the, uh, on this truck, it's Sox Stereo's owner. Uh, they own it. They own it. So it's actually Sox Stereo's merchandise at that time, as soon as it gets on the truck. And because it's there, um, they're shipping it from Michigan all the way to Illinois, guess who's going to be paying for the transportation of all of that and the costs, right? It's going to be the buyer. The buyer is going to be paying because it's their merchandise. They bought it, FOB shipping. They take ownership of it as soon as it gets to the carrier. Um, and boom, 
they're responsible for it. So they're going to be paying shipping, they're going to pay insurance, things like that, what you do, okay, until it gets to them. Uh, this is the most common way that ownership of goods are transferred. There is another way. FOB destination is another possible way of transferring ownership. Again, Sox Stereo uh, is the buyer. PW Audio is the seller. PW Audio has the circuit board and circuits for FOB destination. They still own it once it gets to the carrier. The carrier has to go, in, in this case, from Michigan to Illinois to deliver it to the buyer. And this point where the delivery happens to the buyer, that's the destination, that's when ownership passes. So ownership takes place either at the shipping point for FOB shipping or when it reaches its destination for FOB destination. If it's FOB destination because the seller still owns all of that until it gets to the buyer, the seller is going to take care of all the costs and insurance. Okay. Um, so invent, yeah, inventory is an asset account. It's, it's going to uh, increase on the debit side. All right. So this is, uh, this is important to understand regarding freight costs, freight costs because um, business to business transactions occur across the state, across the country and, across, and around the globe. And freight is always a cost. So it depends on whether the ownership transfers at shipping or at destination, you're gonna find out who pays the cost. But again, FOB shipping is very common. So oftentimes the buyer is paying. Okay. Uh, okay. If the seller uh, is paying, it's basically a, an operating expense. They just simply cost it out as freight. Okay, it's an expense account. But when a buyer pays for freight, something different happens, as you'll see. So let's say that <clears throat> stock stereo, remember they're the buyer, they pay a freight company $150 to get the freight from Michigan, where PW Audio is, to their headquarters in Michigan. They pay $150. How do they look at it? They're, they're the buyer, they're the buyer. Well, actually, according to um, historical cost principle, which you read a little bit about in accounting one, one, assets have to be valued at their cost. So they just didn't buy the circuit board and circuits. That's not just the cost of the inventory. It's the circuit board and circuits plus the shipping. That's the real cost of the circuit and circuit board. So in that sense, the, any shipping costs are going to be debited to inventory because again, inventory as an asset account, we need to reflect the true cost of the inventory. So inventory will increase with any freight charges that we pay for as the buyer. Okay. And of course we'll pay for those in, in cash. Uh, if it's the seller, though remember the seller expenses it. The buyer does not. The buyer has to reflect that the inventory costs them more. So for example, if you see something on TV that you like and it's $20, and, but it costs you $5 to get it to your house, What's the real cost of the, of the good? It's $25. This is how accounting looks at it with inventory. They paid $3,800 for the inventory plus an additional $150 to get it to them. What's the real cost of the inventory? $2,950. So that's a uh, $3,950 rather. That's how, they, that's how they look at it, okay? So that's how you have to think about it from the buyer's perspective, okay? Again, if the seller pays for it, they simply expense it. Um, freight out, this is an expense account that you'll see on, uh, in a number of different companies, merchandising companies when they ship out freight. Uh, freight out is an expense account. Um, and uh, you'll see that again, simply when, when selling a good that they're paying for, they're paying for the shipping. 
Okay, so that's an expense. Well, you know how it is. You've probably all bought something and it's been delivered to you. You open it up and sometimes there's something you don't want and you want to return it. That's pretty common, even business to business transactions, uh, there's returns. And so um, what happens then when Sox Stereo opens up the boxes, they look at the circuit board, they look at the circuits and they decide, well, actually I don't need that many circuits, right? They wanna return something. So, uh, so that's, that's, quite, that's quite frequent, that happens pretty frequently. Um, and uh, so that's something you have to know a, a little bit about, something called a purchase return. Oftentimes it's because they're dissatisfied. Um, it might be an inferior quality. It might not meet their specifications that they thought, so they send it back. It's, it's rare when a good or a product is defective where manufacturing is at that point where they're creating a lot of products that are not, the defection rate is very low. And so there's less defective products out there. It's possible the goods have, could have been damaged uh, in shipping or other types of things and, and they need to be returned. Um, in some cases, they might wanna keep the purchase. They might be dissatisfied based on the quality and they think they might've overpaid for it. And they might call the seller and say, look, I'm gonna send this back to you or you can give me a discount and allowance on the price. You can cut a deal with me and I'll keep it. So sometimes that happens and that's a purchase allowance. The most common is the return. <laughs> okay. So Sox Stereo in this case, uh, they open up the box and they're gonna return one of the circuits for $300 uh, to PW Audio Supply. This happened on the 8th of May. So how does Sox Stereo keep their books? Remember, they're the buyer, they bought this. When they bought it, they added it to the inventory and they also added it to their accounts payable because they were gonna pay for it. What happens when they return something is they simply flip those accounts. They take it out of the payable because they're not gonna pay for it. And they take it out of their inventory because they're shipping it back. They don't want it, it's not their inventory anymore. So it's basically just a flipped account in this case, anytime there's a return from the buyer, from the buyer. Okay, everything is about inventory. Um, there are, uh, again, those, there are credit terms that allows the buyer to pay early and save money. So that's considered uh, a discount, purchase discount. And there's a lot of different credit terms. 210 net 30 is by far uh, among the most popular and widely used credit term uh, from a business to business transaction, okay? Uh, there's a couple of big advantages. Uh, if you're buying this with the credit term, you can save 2% on, uh, on your purchase, which might not sound a lot, but when you're buying a machinery and equipment that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, it adds up. Uh, if not, the net amount is due in 30 days, which is typical. And you want your bills paid in 30 days. Um, there, your book shows you that there's a few other ways of looking at things uh, in terms of the discounts. Uh, by far, most of your examples in the book are going to be 210 net 30. But there are others. Okay. So Sox Stereo now had, they want to pay the account, right? Because 10 days, they bought it on May 4th. If they pay by, uh, by May 14th, they can take that discount, that 2% in 10 days, right? But their balance is now $3,500. Remember, they bought $3,800 worth of stuff, but they just sent back $300 worth of stuff. So the balance is $3,500. If they pay by the 14th of May, they can save 2%. They don't have to pay the entire $3,500 balance. They can pay 2% less. So they wanna do that. 
Um, so this is what it looks like on the books of the buyer when they take the discount. They will show they've paid their $3,500 accounts payable in full. However, as you'll see, they've only sent $3,430 in cash. The additional $70 is a discount on the inventory. In other words, the inventory costs less. So crediting inventory $70 reflects the true cost of the inventory. You buy the inventory for a certain amount, you might have to add or increase inventory because you paid for shipping, but you can decrease inventory if you take a discount. And that's all they're talking about here. So 2% of the $3,500 is a $70 discount. Your inventory costs $70 less. So that's why it's, it's uh, credited to inventory. Mm -hmm. Fascinating, tell me more. Okay, well, I'll tell you more. What if they failed, uh, they, they waited until June to pay it? Well, then it's simple. They simply owe the entire $3,500, in which case they would debit their payable and credit cash for the full $3,500 and it's done. All right, don't worry about these things here. Um, the do it exercise at the end of the um, uh, learning objective is important because the same one is done in learning objective three. So it's important to review it and know, know the differences. Again, the do it exercise in learning objective two is about the buyer, it's about a purchase. Uh, learning objective three, as you'll see soon, is all about the seller. Okay. So here's our transaction on the 5th of September. De La Hoya Company buys merchandise on account. Remember that little phrase from Accounting 101? Anything on account is means you're going to buy it later. Are you going to pay for it later? If you buy merchandise on account, it means you're going to get the merchandise, but you're going to pay for it later. Mm -hmm. The purchase price paid uh, was $1,500. Oh, by the way, they bought it from Juno Diaz Company. So Juno Diaz is the seller, De La Hoya is the buyer. Three days later, De La Hoya returns $200 worth of what they consider defective goods. So we are the bookkeepers for De La Hoya. De La Hoya is the buyer. De La Hoya is the buyer. Uh, what happened? Well, on September the 5th, they bought a ton of merchandise. So let's put that transaction as debiting inventory for 1500, crediting accounts payable for 1500. Simple enough. Three days later, they returned merchandise. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to flip. <laughs> okay. You're going to, you're going to debit accounts payable 200 because you're lowering $200 worth of what you owe. And you're also lowering your inventory by 200, which is why $200 credit to inventory lowers the amount of inventory. Mm -hmm. And that is your buyer. I'm gonna take a break. Questions? 